Hello and welcome to The Telescope. Every week we bring you a fresh insight from the biggest car market in the world. Today we get to see the Baojun Cloud in its stationary form. Now, I've already done a pretty detailed preview video on this car. This video instead is me keep saying I was right about this, I was right about that, I was right about just about everything. So if you find this boring, I highly recommend you check out that preview video. We'll flash all of the uh, specification on the screen for you. But and nearly 4.3 meters long, this is ever so slightly bigger than the Volkswagen ID3. Actually, Baojun is pitching this car to slot in between the BYD Dolphin and the Ion Y, but because of those two cars are not widely available internationally. For the sake of this video, for the sake of international audience, I'm going to compare this car mainly to my Volkswagen ID3. In terms of exterior design, this car is called the Baojun Cloud, and they also admit they took inspiration from the Cloudgate sculpture in Chicago, United States. I can see a bit of that going on, you know, this sort of rised up central proportion and overall it does look like a very round piece of cloud. One of the major highlights of this car is the boot space, but not the way I thought it would be. I was right about one thing though, this car does have a very, very low um, floor. Because this car is on torsion beam rear suspension, you have a lot of underfloor storage. If I take this out, Look at the amount of space you have. Baojun is quoting this to have 606 litres of space if you completely remove the, the floor. And the space above the floor is kind of industry average, about 382 litres compared to the 385 litres in the ID3. It's not spectacular, but ID3, you cannot remove the floor and you definitely don't have 600 litres if you really need it. Several interesting observations. Firstly, this rear glass panel is clear. It's not tinted at all, and this car does not have a low cover for the boot. You can clearly see the Baojun Cloud is designed for a country with an extremely low crime rate. I mean, if you put anything of value in this car and drive it onto the streets of London, Paris, California, it probably won't survive the first week with this clear glass, glass and no load cover. I mean, you can see through the inside of this boot very easily. But this is much less of a concern if you live in the East Asian countries. Secondly, major criticism, this car does not have a rear wiper. Looking at the picture, I was suspecting the rear wiper is sort of hiding under this top spoiler, but it doesn't have that. And I think this is a major shame. This car has excellent rear visibility. For a rear glass this vertical and this big, not have a rear wiper, I think they will regret this. We've already seen the BYD Dolphin to add back the rear wiper in the 2023 model year. I think Baojun sooner or later will have to add this rear wiper in. We start the interior on the back row because as I said in the preview video, this Baojun Cloud is aiming to be the do everything, go everywhere, keep up with everyone else, full function electric vehicle. And this back row is huge. I mean, it is Longitudinal space is actually kind of similar to the ID3, but you sit taller and the cabin feels significantly wider than the ID3. And the seat back can recline to a ridiculous angle. Now, this is kind of the normal angle. Look how much it can recline to. I mean, I can spend five hours on this. This Baojun is quoting the official angle to be 135 degrees. To put it in automotive terms, that's 45 degrees over 90 degrees. To put it into perspective, this amount of adjustment is similar to the BMW i7. While well, this car starts at $15,000, I'm not trying to compare this car to the BMW i7, just trying to give you an idea how much freedom you have for a 15,000 all function basic electric vehicle. This is beyond expectation. We're on the front row. We'll sh first show you some B-row footage. I think we can all agree none of the 15,000 electric vehicles has an interior quite like this. But I'll say one thing, it's not outrageous. You can see how they did it because this, 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 they are all hard plastics. But you can see the designers tried extremely hard through different materials, different texture, different color, to give it multiple layers, to give it more complications than just a simple hard plastic interior. I think this is the best looking hard plastic 
interior I have ever seen. And on some of the key touch points like the steering wheel, the armrest, the central armrest, and the sort of the top cover of this instrument panel, they are all soft touch materials. So you have acceptable materials where you need it and everywhere else it tries to control the cost in a pleasing way. And would you just look at this screen? It's 15.6 inches across, 1080p, good brightness, good color, and most importantly, good UI design. I mean, none of this is hideously um, ugly. This is very internationally acceptable as soon as they change it into the English language. My first impression looking at screen this big, software this well done on a 15,000 US dollar electric vehicle is, well, I know I keep banging on about this, is Volkswagen, you should be ashamed. I mean, just look at this. This is the current standard of a $15,000 Chinese electric vehicle. When I step back into my ID3 tomorrow, it's gonna feel like I step back in centuries. I'm not, I kid you not. I mean, I'm not expecting Tesla or Neo kind of software requirement, but you at least need to have a screen that's responsive enough and doesn't go black every once in a while. On an electric vehicle of this price range, cost control is everything. So I'm very surprised to find out that this shiny piece of metal is actually magnesium alloy. So this car doesn't have a rear wiper, has a hard plastic interior, but it has a magnesium alloy back panel for its screen. If this is not for thermal reasons, please give me a plastic back panel and give me back my rear wiper. Several details on the interior. First of all, this car has five cup holders on the front cabin, three in the center console, and one on each side of the passenger and the driver's seat. One thing you do have to note, this cup holder does not have air conditioning pass through. So your drink, especially under the hot summer and the direct sunshine is probably gonna get very hot very quickly. But I think these two cup holders are the perfect location to mount your phone, put your fragrance, because this is behind the front airbags, it won't be a safety concern if you mount something big. And overall storage, this is very competitive. You have a wireless charging pad, and overall, this area looks nicer, much nicer than the ID3, although it may not necessarily cost that much more because everything you see here are hard plastic, but on a $15,000 electric vehicle, I'm not gonna complain about that. Let's have an educated guess on the pricing of this. This has a smaller battery. The smaller battery only has about 360 kilometers CLTC range. And because Baojun is slotting this car in between the BYD Dolphin and the Ion Wire, we can have a pretty good range bound speculation on the price of this car. We suspect the base spec, the smaller battery version, to be priced roughly around $15,000. And that car, apart from the smaller battery, won't be that much different to the car you see here today. I mean, all of the interior colors, the materials will be the same. The only difference is going to be the battery size and some of the ADAS functions like the 360 degree cameras. We suspect the base spec of the bigger battery, the 460 kilometer CLTC range version, to be priced roughly around 16.5 thousand US dollar. And the top spec we're filming here today with the DJI ADAS kit selected, we suspect it will be roughly around $19,000. This pricing is competitive even in China. We think this car will put huge pressure onto the BYD Dolphin because this is a bigger, better made car, especially with that interior. This is the static review of the Belgian Cloud, but do you see those two cameras? That's the DJI ADAS kit I was, I was talking about. We're gonna try out the ADAS capability of this car on the August Dynamic Media test drive. And Baojun is billing this car to have quite outrageous assisted driving functions for this price level and several price levels above. So we've already seen the effect of the DJI kit on the Baojun Yep. Now this system on this car will work all the way up to 130 kph. So let's wait until the Dynamic Media test drive to see if this DJI kit is as good as Baojun think it is. That is all from the telescope today. If you enjoyed this video, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.